So today we're going to be working on the home page. And this is what I'm calling the home page. And basically what it is is a list of all the repos that people have asked questions about. So let's say I've gone over to my code ponder repo. I've gone into one of the files and then I've asked a question. Come on. Did I crash it? No, it's not. Just refresh then. That was weird, it wasn't loading. So I've gone into my, my file and I've added some questions. So I want this repo, binawad slash code ponder, to show up on the home page so other people can see that, hey, Ben has a question about his code ponder repo. You can click on here to answer it. So this is what we're gonna work on. So to start off, the first thing I wanna do is how do we actually figure out what data to display here, right? So this is gonna be, the information is like gonna be the repo name and like a description of it and some user information. And we, how, how, do we, how do we get that information, right? Because what we're storing in our database right now is one thing. Well, actually I think we're doing more than one thing, but essentially just one thing. So let's go to our entities. We have currently three things. We're storing users, replies to questions, and then questions. So the questions is like the one thing that I'm talking about that we're storing. Um, and we can see that we have the repo on here. Uh, so one option that we could do is we could basically write a SQL statement to grab all of our questions. Um, and then after we grab all the questions, we'll be able to see the repos for them. Um, and then we can fetch each repo from the GitHub API uh, and display it here. Oops, here. That's option one. I don't think I'm gonna go for that option, mainly because it's gonna be super expensive um, to fetch data from the GraphQL or from the GitHub API uh, for the home page every single time, because this is going to be basically eight requests per user. Um, and very quickly you can just keep making requests and I think we're just gonna like, um, I don't think this is worth doing that for this, especially because the information is not really gonna change. Um, so option one, well that was option one. Option two is to basically just add a caching layer to it. So once we fetch the data from the API once, just store it uh, in Redis. But I think what's even simpler than that is to just put this in the database. So that was something I was gonna do originally. And so what I'm thinking is storing the repos in the database. And so basically what's gonna happen is when you create a question, um, we're gonna see if we've stored the repo in the database or not. And if we haven't, we're gonna just add that information to it. That way we can fetch it later. Oops, we wanna do this. You should fetch the questions instead of the repos. So you saying, um, just display like a list of questions here instead of displaying a list of repos here because that is kind of an interesting idea and maybe that's something we should do um, you run your own graphql server yep we have our own graphql server running so we're using Apollo Server 2 right now. Will all questions be public? In version one, yes. Um, what I'm thinking about is how this would be formatted because like it would really, it would probably look like this. Um, are you using server-side rendering? I am, I am using Next.js for that. Um, so if someone asks like, let's say five questions about their, their, their code review or their code, um, how are we wanting to display this? Are we just gonna have like basically five questions popping up here um, with that information? Maybe we somehow like group them together and show like a summary that they can then click on or something. Cause maybe it is not as important to actually show information about like the repo. That's a good point. Maybe I should just display the questions. 
because then that is going to be simpler and I can skip basically half the steps because then we don't have to create um, a repo entity. We don't have to worry about finding and creating it. We can just go on to pagination and creating cards. So then I just really need to decide how I want this to look like. So the information we're going to have is the following. All right, so we're going to have the name of the repo and we have the username of the user who who has the repo. The repo is the only an organization for the UX for the user organized questions. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I like one question grouped with multiple. Actually, I think yeah. Let's try that then. Uh, or, or or like maybe we don't even worry about displaying multiple at first, and we only display like one per repo, and then you click on that, and then it takes you there. All right, let's play with this idea a little bit and see where we where we get with it. So I guess what I want to start with then is to just we'll put these to the side for now. And I guess we'll start with, actually I wanna start with fetching the data and then we can create the cards for it. All right, so I'm gonna to go to code review questions and we'll create a new resolver for this. Um, this is not gonna be a field resolver. All right, and actually, we may be actually able to just reuse this. No, I think we want to create a new one. So like we have this find code review questions and here we have these different options. But basically right now we require these three options. So one thing we could do is make these options not required and then we can conditionally add them. Do I want to do that or should I just create a new one? I think for this particular version, I'm going to create a new one because we may be doing our, we might be running a custom query or running raw, raw SQL because we want to use distinct to only fetch a single question per repo, I think for now. So I'm gonna separate it for now. Uh, you want the code review object though. Um, I want the code review question. That could be later for filtering the search for filtering. Yeah, that's true because we do want the we still want the these sort of things as well. I'm still gonna split it off because because we want this to be basically a different behavior than this because we're gonna be adding distinct on it to only fetch a single question, I think. How do you do server validation of input in GraphQL, like checking if the email is valid? Uh, basically, you just be like, like in your resolver here, right? Like we can do any kind of custom checks that we want to on the username. Um, and then there's basically two ways you can throw the error back. Option one, you actually just throw the error and you can use Apollo errors, the easiest way to do this right now. So you can pass a message like bad username and then the code can just be, actually it looks like it has to be a string. So like uh, bad input. And then you can pass in here like exactly what's wrong with it. So username um, max length five or whatever you want to do. Alternatively, you can actually pass it back in the resolver itself. Which I think I tend to do that option more. Um, are you for hire? Right now I am basically full of work, so currently no. Are you, can you use custom types also? Yeah, you can, 
I don't think I've done custom scalers for it. You definitely could if you wanted to. So I'll show you what I what I have done for previous projects. So I think for the Airbnb clone, I'd use this technique. Um, so let's go into our server modules and it's gonna be the sign up register. Yeah. So where's my schema? So in my schema here, I actually return an object, an array of errors. So this error type, I believe I have maybe in shared. Nope, maybe in user. Yeah. So all this error type is, is a path, which is a string and a message, which is a string. So the path is going to be like email or password, whatever is wrong. And then the message is like, what is actually wrong with it? And so the example of what this looks like in my resolver is, all right, so here, here's what the code looks like. So here we're checking whether the email already exists. So here I'm fetching a user. And if we find a user, which we're checking if we get undefined or not, we return an error here. And this is what it looks like path is email. Um, and then we say duplicate email. So that's that's how I like to do it. Uh, GraphQL is type safe and you can apply your own logic and resolvers or middleware with GraphQL middleware, exactly. So you can do some of this stuff as a GraphQL middleware. And so for example, right here, I'm using yup. So I have a yup schema that checks for things and then I actually throw in, I return the error back and format it. This could be something you could turn into a middleware with uh, GraphQL middleware. Alrighty, so what do I want to call this? So this is going to be fine code review questions. This is going to be, this is kind of find code review questions. It's kind of not though. This is more of like home page questions. I'm just going to call this home home questions. I don't love the name of this, but we are going to return an array of code review questions. Um, and then arguments right now, let's just assume we have no arguments for now. All right, so here I'm going to say questions. So I actually don't know how I do distinct. So this is where I'm thinking I may have to do a custom query. And by custom query, I just mean write the SQL myself. Because I want to say distinct here. hidden columns, let's just search for the word distinct. Don't see it. So we're gonna have to write the SQL ourselves, which is A-OK. -okay. I see, I'll probably go with the middleware approach. What about using a directive? I've seen some libraries do valuation that way. It kind of looked like a weird mix of with the schema though. I'm so sad Typeform doesn't exist for vanilla JS. Um, yeah, Typeform, I think it kind of works with JS, but it kind of doesn't. Um, I can't really see how it would work, but I think it says it supports it. Um, but I can't really see how it works, so I'm not surprised it doesn't work well. Um, yeah, whenever I was doing JS stuff, I was using SQLize, which I didn't like as much. Yeah, maybe you have to do it with Babel. I haven't looked too much into it. Really, you should come just come over to the TypeScript uh, train, join us. Yeah, it definitely was designed for TypeScript though. But yeah, I agree with you, uh, Angus. I think the validation in the schema is less less exciting. I don't like that as much as adding it as middleware um, or adding it in the resolver, I think, because it kind of muddies up the schema. I mean, these days, I'm not even writing. I say these days, but for this project, I'm not uh, doing a, a regular schema. Uh, SQLize Mongoose and CIE. 
I'm not even sure what CIE is, are really ugly. Uh, yeah, I I was not a huge Sequel Eyes fan myself. I haven't done too much with Mongoose, so I can't say um, whether or not I like that as much. So all we have to do to write our own is we're gonna say await get connection dot query. And then whenever I'm writing queries, I really like to use this program. It's called data grip. The type orm public API feels more natural. I agree, it just it feels just overall a little cleaner. Yeah, Typeworm is definitely not perfect. Um, the way I look at it is it's the least of the evils in my opinion right now. All right, so here are all the questions we can see that we've asked. So what's kind of interesting about this is I want to do distinct based on these two columns concatenated together. So like username and repo put together. I wonder if I should do like a group by thing or if distinct is the better choice here. I'm actually not sure. I think I'm gonna go with distinct because I know the syntax, syntax off the top of my head. So I think we do it like that. Do I do a comma? I can't remember. So I'm just gonna try this. Oh, I don't know why I was hard coding it there. Okay, so that did not work. All right, so my syntax is not correct. There we go. So if I do it like that, As soon as I add the ID, it's it's I think it's trying to do distinct on all the columns. So I think I'm just not doing that correctly. Okay, I do distinct on, there we go. That's what I was missing. Perfect. So now the interesting part is, is I have to like concat them together. I think I, I think I just do this. Yeah, that works right. All right, so this SQL statement's actually super easy. I'll just copy this in. Uh, this way. There's my code. All right, and that's basically all we want to return. So one thing I'm missing from the statement is pagination. That's okay for now. 
I just want to see if it works. Okay, what did I have this running on? Ah, oh, Apollo Air. I noticed that as well. I'm I was very surprised by just the lack of good orms and and node for how popular it is. It's pretty surprising. Like I came from doing stuff with Django and so this was like a big step down for me. Expected value of type code review question, but got this. So I'm not sure what format's gonna return to us just from the raw SQL, so let's let's take a look. That looks pretty good to me. Maybe someone needs to build a new one. Yeah, they do. It's definitely not gonna be me though. Building an ORM is so annoying. There's a reason why there's not a good one. All right, I guess let's just read the question more closely. Expected value of type code review question. So, okay. Created at is an empty object. What am I missing from this? A type arm has 569 open issues on GitHub. Uh, I can't imagine SQLize has too, too fewer. I didn't say that well. I can't imagine SQLize has uh, a low issue count. I bet they have quite a few as well. Is it just my syntax that's off? I was just I was just looking at this and this looked off to me. All right, so I'm doing something odd. What happens is if I return an empty array? I'm gonna restart TypeScript just to make sure I'm not missing something. Okay, that works. my eyes, this looks like the right format. Have you heard of Prisma, a GraphQL server on top of the database and an auto-generated ORM? That makes ORMs both incredibly hard to deal with from a user perspective as well as a library and author's perspective. Yeah, maybe like set up entities and type ORM though. Okay, let's run this, same thing. Yeah, I have, I've heard of Prisma as well, and I've used it a little bit, and I like it. I'm 
not sure what this error means. Expected type code review question. Got an array. Or got an object. Invalid return type error. I was hoping it would tell us like what exactly was wrong. So just to test, if I do code review question dot find, does that work okay? It looks like TypeScript throwing a type error since it's returning only an object with the ID, but it wants an object type of type. Or rather an array type of question. So, well, it's odd because, okay, that works just fine. So what what's odd though is it expects an array. So why don't we do this? Let's just see what the difference between these two are because this works. Yeah, shady. It's kind of odd because I th thought the types lined it up, lined up. <laughs> All right, so it it's literally says the word code review question there, whereas here it does not. All right, but let's see if there's if we're missing like anything other than that. ID, starting num, ending num. That's really interesting. So if I do it like that, let's see what happens. It could be something with type graph QL maybe? That's so weird. Yeah, it must be that. I don't know why I wouldn't accept something that is not liter like that comes from that class. I mean, I, I guess we can just map over it and make it into that. Um, code review question doc create just pass in the question like you can do that now this is must this must be a type worm thing that feels I mean type GraphQL thing that feels really weird to me yeah that's what was the problem okay that's so weird I've never had to do that before with any other GraphQL stuff so I definitely think that's a type GraphQL thing must be I don't know all right let's check on chat yeah the date was formatted kind of weird I thought that could have been a problem too but it doesn't look like it uh, no pro programmatic usage of Prisma. You have to use the Prisma CLI in your deployments. Tightly coupled with Docker can solve Prisma as a standalone. Yeah, I would say uh, the, the, one, the thing that for me is um, right now you cannot use uh, one thing that's a blocking factor for me is I can't do like uh, Postgres uh, columns that are unique to Postgres. So for example, one project I use uses full text search. And so it uses a column type uh, VS. It, no, it's called TS vector, I think. Mm -hmm. 
And so I need to set my column type. So basically right now, Prisma doesn't support all the Postgres column types. Um, and then the other thing is it's a little bit annoying to set up like Prisma's little proxy server they have. But in general, I do still like Prisma and uh, I would be, I would like consider using Prisma for this project if I wasn't, um, what's it called, trying out Type GraphQL. But in general, I'm liking the way you can do stuff with Type GraphQL. It's pretty nice just having like a single schema um, that I don't have to generate types for, that it's kind of embedded in, and I can like integrate with Typeform so far. It's been really nice. Type GraphQL sounds like it's enforcing the TypeScript stuff. And yeah, TypeScript is pretty picky. It's odd that they're enforcing the class name since it has the same data, which is a little odd. They must be checking like the type of or something. The best approach is to write your own GraphQL server. You have full control. The worst approach is to use a public GraphQL cloud. You have less control. The middle approach is to use Prisma. You have high control, but not of all things. That's in my opinion. I feel like with uh, Prisma, the thing that you lose control over is mostly your database. But then after that, you're pretty much free to do whatever you want with your server. Um, and you can directly access like your database yourself if you want to, I believe. But uh, you lose some of the uh, access to it. I mean, you don't lose it, but you would do everything through the, the proxy server. doesn't look weird. You're doing a query string. Um, it doesn't know you're returning code review questions. Yeah, I, I guess it just ch it checks it against like this or something. Type worm is not pluggable for those custom concepts. Yeah. Alrighty, so so right now what our homepage would look like, do we even have a name for questions? I think we just have a text for them. So what that looks like. So I don't think we care to show like starting line number and ending line number. I don't think that really makes sense to show on the homepage. I think showing the text is probably useful. And I actually don't think we need to I was trying to decide whether we needed to grab all the data and use a fragment for it, but I think it's fine to just pick, be picky about what we display. I think it makes sense to display like the repo and the username for it. Typeworm can do distinct. How do I uh, use distinct with it? Do they have a search on their thing? Yeah, I couldn't find it in here when I just searched distinct. So I wasn't really sure how to find it in their docs. It would make sense if they had something. Okay, I'm to check that issue out. I think we also care about showing the user that asked the question. And their picture is distinct equal to group by um, no because with group by you can do other stuff in this case like it kind like we, I think we could achieve the same thing with group by but we don't want to we don't need to actually we don't actually need to do it because we don't need to do any kind of like aggregation things, which is what you'd use group by for. So I guess distinct is maybe like a little bit of a shortcut. I'm not sure. Okay, so I can do it with the query builder and I just write it when I do dot select. Okay, cool. All right, this looks pretty good for the what we display in the card. So we're gonna home questions, which is right up there. There's no variables to it right now. So we'll go to web, GraphQL, 
code review questions, query home questions. All right, so now we can do stuff with that. So on our index page, we have the login. I think we want to keep the login with GitHub there. I think we should make it into like a nice button. And then down here, I guess we'll just display, let's call home questions component. This should be home questions. I was like, that sounds a little weird because there's no S. So we can display our spinner. So if we don't have any data for some reason, that's a problem. We'll just display a spinner for now. Actually, let's say if we couldn't get any data and we're not loading, All right, so I just saved it and we're not getting, we're getting weird syntax highlighting. So I think I have a bracket where something shouldn't, in this case, look like those parentheses shouldn't be there. I'm gonna go ahead and just close data grip. We're done with that. There's a Babel RC in TypeScript. Yeah, so uh, Babel now has a preset for TypeScript, so we can use Babel plugins, um, like styled components with TypeScript. And that's pretty much the way you do TypeScript in Next, is you use the Babel preset. Yeah, TS node is what we use for this server. Oh, is that what you use backpack for? Interesting, I'll have to look at that. I had heard of backpack, but I haven't, I hadn't looked at it yet. Um, so you can use the Babel plugin with TypeScript it's more of like you can use TypeScript with Babel and then you can use Babel plugins. And the bat and like TypeScript is a Babel preset, which I guess would include a whole bunch of Babel plugins. Okay, so here's the data that we really wanna display. Um, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and create our cards here. Uh, something I was meaning to do as well was to make this or like export this into what's it called zeppelin because it's a little bit easier to read all the values but i forgot to do that so today we're going to just continue using figma and i just need to go into the edit mode Currently our code ponder UI folder is 137 K 
kilobytes. That's interesting. I wonder what's making it so big right now. I wonder if that's accurate. I'm gonna call this a question card. Maybe we should call it something else. It should get D seed and prod build. I'm using my own webpack plus package. How are you liking using package? I was thinking about um, giving that a try for something, but I didn't know if it was uh, worth doing. Oh, is there a way in Figma where you can see, oops, where you can see stuff better? I want you over here. That's the other thing. There may, I'm not super good with how to navigate Figma. No, we don't want the screen. We want this one. Because what I have been doing is just like trying to click on stuff here and getting like the font sizes through this. Ah, there we go. I need to click this code right there. Yeah. Perfect. Let's see. It looks like we have options if we wanted to do this Android or iOS. Cool. I bet they have a plugin for React Native as well. Actually, we made this project 16.7. So there's really no reason why this should be a class. So we need to copy pretty much. what the fragment is. And I'm purposely hard coding this because I don't want my UI, because I don't think it makes sense to like imp have my UI library import my GraphQL types. So is, does package easy to set up with TypeScript or makes sense to set up with TypeScript? Yeah, I don't think we're gonna use it for the positioning parts. We'll probably just use it for like the font stuff. All right, so I guess let's let's start with the card itself. I was hoping it would give me the shadow that it has, but it looks like we're gonna have to create that ourselves. We created a, a, sh a shadow the other day though, so I think we can kind of use a similar with our folder tree. We use the box shadow. I wonder if I can use the same like container thing. I'm gonna try creating a new, let's see if it looks good with it. And if it does, I'm gonna export it and use it to the places.
I feel like I could automatically maybe create this. Nah. I was thinking about maybe I should be automatically creating the story components because I basically do the same thing every time. But then I remember I might want to pass in different props and stuff, so. Ah, uh, crap. I have to pass all those props in. Wanted to make sure it wasn't white. Oh, dang it. Because I saw FFF at the end, so I didn't know if it was going to be white, which I didn't want it to be. Would you be a digital nomad? Maybe. Would you be? I packaged my Prisma and Next.js project into two Docker images. Oh, okay. So, so does that mean Do you use, do you use, uh, like, do you also create a Docker file that uses the package executable or does package generate the Docker image itself? Oh, that's pretty cool, Bert. Do you not do it anymore? Okay, so when it goes from package to Docker, does package make it into a Docker image or do you create a Docker file that uses the package executable? Okay, you use the package binary in your, your okay. Oh, yeah. oh, you need more money, you go back. <laughs> But for open source projects, it doesn't make sense. Uh, to what to use package? All right, here's what our card looks like. <laughs> That's actually not what I want it to look like. That shape is not what we want. I think I just need more stuff maybe in the card itself. And maybe it'll be a better, a better card. I don't want it to just be stretched across the whole screen. I want to see what it looks like when it's just kind of like wrapping it.
what format do I pass this in now? Items, name and type. I need to also pass in a link and get link props. Will that work? I'm not sure what I want to pass into link here to make it work smoothly. As for open source, you can publish your code with a node image. So you're saying the only benefit to package then is to obfuscate or hide your code. Minimum width and height. Well, I want to do it. Well, first off, what the heck? Oh, it's because I made them into buttons. So I, I want to make it to where it wraps it. Um, so I could like say min, min width of like 500 and be like that. And maybe that's what I want. But I was thinking I wanted to just wrap the content right here, which I believe it should do by default. Maybe I have to say display flex on it though. Um, let's see if this will be, so this box shadow is way thicker than this box shadow. This box shadow is way lighter. This has a blue line across, around it. This does not. So I think we're just gonna go ahead and create a, a different card or a different container. I don't think we wanna reuse. How are you using GraphQL queries on the client? So on the client, um, we write GraphQL queries like this. We're using Apollo to actually like send the GraphQL request or the GraphQL query. And then we're using a library called GraphQL Code Generator to generate the Apollo components. All right, so I'm trying to find an example of it. Here's an example. So like, here's what the component would look like for a fine code review question. Now this is just a bunch of junk you can ignore. That's TypeScript. Here's more TypeScript you can ignore. The gist of it, we use is the query component from Apollo and we just pass in our GraphQL query. Display inline block. I don't know if it's just the I always get confused finding this because I didn't I don't think of it as the tab there. Uh, let's go over to this basic card example. Are you using Apollo two point one um, components? Yeah, I am. Is there support for React hooks right now um, in Apollo? No, but there's a community library. I was actually gonna try that. The only thing is we're getting components auto-generated for us anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So this is actually really simple. There's a performance hit search issue. I think you can find some discussion on that, but it's mainly a startup penalty, not a runtime penalty. Oh, interesting. When I tried, they aren't sent server-side rendering. Um, I believe we should be server-side rendering. 
uh, we can do a check though. So how we can check to be sure whether or not they are firing server side or not is we can just, I think, open up our network tab and see if we get a GraphQL request. And it doesn't look like it's firing. It looks like it's firing server side. Here's an example of when we do client side. And then we get some GraphQL requests. So when I this load this page loads server side rendering first and then we make other requests, it then does client side. You hope they do something fast. I think this library is like good to use for now. I mean, it's obviously a community one and you shouldn't be using it in prod. Um, but I feel like when Apollo creates theirs, it's probably gonna be pretty similar to this. So you could probably start using this if you wanted to. Looks like you may be using suspense with this too. So that's, that's a place where um, Where, where are we doing it? We're checking for loading here. So we're actually checking for loading here and displaying a, a spinner. Uh, I believe we could replace that with some suspense stuff if we were using this hook library. So maybe we can give this a try at some point. Uh, the disadvantage for this is we're gonna have to write up the query ourselves or like create it ourselves and I'm kind of liking the auto generation Looks like they're doing the if loading thing here too. Maybe you'll be able to do suspense as well. I don't know. I'm not sure if this library would work with server side rendering either. That's the other thing. So personally, I think I'm just gonna wait on it. Oh yeah, I mean, we're using React Hook 16.7 right now and I'm gonna publish this. Why is React Hook still in alpha? They're probably fixing all kinds of stuff, so I guess with it. All right, so let's try some of the suggestions you guys had with the CSS. Okay. All right, we don't care about that, okay. All right, so we have this div and this div. So why is this div just, just like taking over the screen? There we go. So yeah, you were right. We just need to do display inline block and it's this outer one. Cause this is what I wanted. I wanted to wrap it. And now we can add padding and stuff so it looks nice. All right. All right, so we're gonna create a totally new container here. So I believe this one does not have any border. At least I can't tell if it has a border. It doesn't look like it does. We're not seeing anything in the code. I don't see anything there, I don't think. I think it has a light drop shadow though. Let's try like maybe like a B3. We still want the curved edges, we just don't want the border. All right, that's still really dark. We want even fainter than that. Uh, why can't you get type safety with hooks? All right, so we wanna go with just like a lighter shade of gray. I'm gonna try all the way up to this F2, 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 because our mock-up is pretty light there. All 
All right, so the padding is 15. Let's call it, let's call it 16, that's a nice whole number. Well, I guess 15 is too, but you know, it feels like it's a power of something. All right, I think this is using elevation and not like a box shadow. <laughs> so it looks like you achieve elevation with a box shadow. We did the negative, oops. We do want kind of like a material de material design box shadow thing. Yeah, this is kind of what we're going for. Uh, position relative. Great. I feel like the color is even lighter, but I'm gonna call that good enough for now. All right, so that's not remotely picking it up. I forgot whether we're loading the font or not. I feel like a, I feel like we've done this a thousand times. I'm going to add, I forget where you do it in Storybook where you can add stuff that is added to every component. but we're gonna add the Rubik font over here so I can see what it looks like. Yeah, that looks definitely much better. Yeah, custom head tag is what we want. How do I do this? Preview head. We're done with that. So let's add Rubik and it should give us what we want. So we actually want to also load medium. Okay. Are we seeing any change here? Let's see what the head, if the head includes it now. 
it's not since we just pasted that in I'm gonna restart storybook So the text here, I think I'm going to make the question. Oh, so this was actually a color that I needed to use as well. There we go. That looks so much better. <laughs> Our folder tree looks kind of wonky now. So this is just going to be the text. Sorry, we need to space this a little bit. Looks like it was only six. I assume the padding is going to be similar down here. Yeah. So card body. See if there's a padding on the left and right. There's not. So they're just padding top. So for a second there, I always forget whether it's vertical first or it's horizontal first. All right, let's take a guess. Dang it, I guessed wrong. And now every card is gonna be the same thickness. So maybe we do just set a width on it because we want them all to be uniform. So this card is 376 by 157. Let's go with three, I'm fine with 376. You know, I'm, I'm fine with just copying dimensions exactly, even though it feels a little weird to have 157 pixels. Okay, we, do we mess with the dimensions? Okay, we, I just didn't add pixels there. This looks so like barren when I don't have a long question. We may have to change the flow of it a little bit because it doesn't seem like we're gonna have a long enough description for this to be the main body. Oh, we were going to have a display like good font choice. Actually, Vlad chose this. So he's the person to thank. And he, he made this mock up for us, which is super nice. So, what I'm trying to think of is right now is how can we get the language for it? So, the question. When we, when we ask the question, I think what we want to do is we want to save the file language or the save the 
file extension or the language that it came from. That way we can add a tag for it if we need to. You could use a clipped version of the question for the description. Well, the pro well, the, it, we basically have the opposite problem, right? Our question could be just way smaller and the card just looks pretty empty. We're, we can definitely do a dot, dot, dot if the question is long which maybe a lot of questions are gonna be long and maybe this is, I guess this is just a silly copy question and most of them may be longer. Uh, real quick though, I wanna add that to the entity. So, I'm gonna say programming language. Oh, what the heck? Just stripped all my semicolons. There we go. Save it and they're back. So the other thing is like the programming language could be like, it could be like PNG. So maybe we need to filter this out when we save it. Well, we can worry about that at a later date, I guess. So I'm making this field in the GraphQL API as well. So we're gonna have to grab that. I'm also gonna have to delete all the questions in my database. Could the programming language be one of those colored bands like GitHub shows? Yeah, that would actually be pretty cool. Uh, wrong project. For now, I think I'm going to just uh, follow with the design and put a tag. Um, and then later we can consider adding like a striped banner at the bottom or like a striped line or something. That'd be kind of interesting. So this is gonna be kind of like the footer. So I'm gonna say const card footer. Have the face of the person, then we're gonna have the username, and then we can display a topic. I guess we should make the username, we should make all this clickable too. All right, so what information do we need to put in the card footer? So this, sh this should basically take up the entire thing. I'm gonna say display flex, 
flex direction column and then we're gonna flex one in the body here and so that way the footer will be at the very bottom um, and then we're also gonna display flex on the footer and oh we also need the date I totally forgot about that so the, the, this is kind of like split into two actually So this is going to be like the left side and the right side is going to be the topics. All right, man. See you later. So let's see what this looks like right now. Um, right here. They can have multiple languages. So how we would just pick the first one, but how GitHub does it is they they actually like the stripe is created based on the percent of each language. We don't really like this is too complex of something like that we're gonna do. We're not gonna like try to know the percentage. Maybe we can get this information. Actually, I think I think we can get this information from GitHub if we wanted to. Currently, we're not fetching it. So maybe it's worth doing that. So we can take a look at the GitHub API and see if we can fetch that. Mm -hmm. So we're looking like this. So let's start with the face. This is how can I get how many pixels it is? It looks like 20 by 20. Here we go, height 16 by 16. Just rename that to owner. Right, username. All right, it's a cute little circle. You love when GitHub gets it wrong because of minified bundles. It's interesting. It is interesting to see what percent GitHub thinks different projects are. As someone brand new to GraphQL, do you recommend staying away from convenience libraries like type or GraphQL? Um, I would definitely learn the standard first and then consider looking at other stuff like type GraphQL because it's good to know kind of the original. I guess when I say original, so GraphQL, there's this GraphQL JS. It's having examples and you write a schema like this. Um, less people write schemas like this. You'll see a ton of people writing schemas how Apollo made it. 
well i believe apollo like started this i can't i actually don't, don't remember like who the first person was um and you write the schema like this i'd recommend learning this method first this seems to be the most popular one and then look at type graphql if that interests you i think so far i've enjoyed using type graphql it's worth checking out but i, I don't think it's makes sense to start with it at least okay so we have this guy here we just need to add like a little space for the username all right how far away are we i personally have taken the type share type script generator that takes in GraphQL specs. Yeah, that's what I used to do. Um, I think we need to just create the username as another component here. Alright, so let's add like padding left of four pixels, maybe. I'm not sure which one Lumi is using, um, but the two that I know of are GraphQL Code Generator. You can use this to actually generate your resolvers. Oh, this is Flow. Where's the TypeScript one? TypeScript Server. That's not a good example of it. Right here they have one for uh, resolvers. So this is what I've used before as well. And then there's one that Prisma came out with called GraphQL Gen. This is the other one that you can use to generate uh, types for your resolvers. Is style components better than normal CSS and CSS and SAS for React apps now? Um, I believe so, yeah. <laughs> this is a little bit off center there. I think we could go with like eight. And we need to push this all the way to the right. I think what I'm how I'm going to do this is with the footer. I I already have it displaying flex. I'm going to have it flex one here. Flex one here. We're going to display flex. And then we're going to say justify content flex end. And I also want this to be like in alignment with this. So I can say align items center and I think that should bring it up to that. It's hard to tell if it did though. All right, so it's actually just this bin wad that's off center. <laughs> All right, so let's say align items center there. All right. So this is a nice outline for our card now. And it matches pretty similar to what we have there. 
I think the only other thing is we need to make this as a grid, but we can do that. As a, I guess we should create that as a separate component here because we may want to do other grids as well. Style components sound like very bad performance comparing to writing external CSS. Um, I think, I th think CSS is faster. I don't actually know the performance benchmarks of between, and I don't know like if uh, style components is like, like so much slower that it makes sense not to use it. Okay, so we have a grid of these thingies, and is it two by two, two by whatever deep? For server side rendering, style components is faster. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Like also it can't generate. So some of the CSS also, I think it needs to generate at runtime because you might have parameters that you pass in and change the CSS. We're not doing it here, but I think we have in the button, we have a function that we're passing in and also in our spinner. So here, here we're like, basically creating the CSS on the fly every time it renders if it needs to. And, and there's optimizations that styled components does around it. All right, so with this card grid, we're gonna actually just render the question card a bunch of times, I guess. For our story uh, and actually so I was thinking about importing react there but I think we can just say card grid and just do a style div display grid and I believe it's called grid template rows is what we want to do and we want to do one fraction here, one fraction there. And let's see what how there's 18 pixels. Space. Uh, I forget what gap, I believe it's called. What did, what did we say, 18 there? Yeah, 18 pixels. So we're going to say card grid.story.tsx. And we can copy that paste it over here and now I'm just going to loop through this a bunch of times and render a ton of these guys. So I'm gonna say card grid and I'm gonna say map Um, and how do I generate a bunch? Can I do array length? Let's do like, let's do six since we do it over there. I was trying to decide how many I wanted. I think that's fine though. T is a string. Thank you. I was I was looking for it to show up. It's because I didn't even change it here. Array.fill then map. Is that better? 
Huh? Yep, it doesn't look like that worked. I don't know if it's my new array or if it's the other one. Should be grid gap as well. Do you know what gap does without the grid? <laughs> All right, looks like we have to fill. Okay. Grid template, looks like it should have been columns, not rows, <laughs> yeah. That's interesting because I did one fraction, one fraction. It actually split it and there's extra space. So it's actually doing extra space there. Nice, that's what I wanted. All right, so this is our array of cards now, our grid of cards now. Let's see what it, how it looks like compared to this. So the other thing, I think the, the background is like a slightly different color than white. So that that's a difference that I see. Um, and then, yeah. Francis asked, where do you think your XP lies currently? Senior, possibly lead or principal? Honestly, I have no idea, like between those, like where, like what each cutoff is considered and like what expertise is in each bucket. So I, I have no idea what I'd be considered. So really the next thing to do is to actually grab the programming language when we create code questions. Um, and then just actually render these cards. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and end the stream here today. And then tomorrow we'll actually render the cards um, in the grid with the actual data. So let's commit our code here. And I'll stick around for a few minutes and answer any other questions you guys have. All right, so create components for homepage. And let's push up. I think I have to pull. Get pull fortune master. Yeah, actually I have heard of that CLI. I think I saw it on Reddit once or something a long time ago. I haven't ever used it though. All right, so we're done with that. So do we have anything to check off? We kind of half did everything. We created the repo cards, so that's nice. Um, we're gonna, we haven't added pagination yet. <laughs> Is there anything else that I wanted to do? I don't think so.
arrow type. Device. All right, see you later, man. Good luck with the Apollo intro. Just kind of looking at all the different little things that is in uh, Figma. I should add to the MVP and add a nav bar. What do you think should go? I guess we kind of have like this thing. I'm not sure if he has it on all the pages. Yeah, he has it on the, all the pages. I agree though. I think adding a nav bar would be a good idea. So we can create something like I guess we can start off with something like this and put that at the top. That's a good idea. Let's see. What's up here? Okay, just that stuff. And that's our colors. Cool. All right, guys, I think that wraps it up for today. Thanks for watching. Going to go ahead and end things, and we'll see you tomorrow.